ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your presence. Today we're going to talk about uh, natural lighting. So we're going to discover all the all the attitude, all the uh, criteria of the natural lighting step by step. And uh, we uh, at the beginning, we discovered the three main pillar of the energy performance, which tell us how natural lighting can affect to different aspects of, uh, of our life. And uh, after that, we have some examples of using or hiring the natural lighting. And at the end, we have some technical resources for calculating all uh, aspects of the canopies, awning, and so on. At the right side, we have four different circles and it shows reading, responding, thinking, and talking on the phone. What is, what's this small red or, uh, or yellow circles are standing for? They are showing the, the level of the concentration of the users and, and the time when the users were, uh, were uh, was distracted and looking to the to the other side. As you see, when the users was reading, almost all their concentration was on the on the task. But when they were responding or talking to the phone or thinking, they were they were all the time kind of so we can sort of we can say they were distracted by the window, which is the source of light. What it, what it tells us, it tells us the importance of the, of the daylighting and uh, tells us how we should consider that and uh, it tells us uh, how human nature is attracted by the natural light and how much we need that. In that building, we have this pattern. Uh, at the interior side, we get very little small a uh, small uh, pattern or patches of the shadow which uh, brings uh, brings the users excitement and the what does it mean ex excitement it's uh, it you know it gives you a different feeling by the by the time passing when time passing uh, this the shadow is moving on the on the floor and uh, you're changing and you won't get bored because of the too many details and those details are constantly changing and here they 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 ask question uh, of the uh, of the users to kind of giving a status or a level for each of these spaces. Is it an exciting space or a, uh, or a complex, interesting or pleasant? So by that, if you were in that place, what kind of experience you would get? And here at the very bottom, we have number one to number five. So number five is a stand for very exciting and number one is standing for very, let's say calm or uh, calm places. And here they, they choose this uh, irregular pattern as a very exciting uh, pattern for the window. What it tells you as a designer, just for a minute, think with yourself what it tells you. It tells, if, even if your space is like a shoebox, uh, by the pattern of the sunlight and the shadow you can get on in the interior side, you can make your users excited and avoiding them from being bored and giving them a different uh, experience. So it's going to be a pleasant, interesting, experience not a boring place which you just want to escape from that and uh, here again we have a, a different pattern they study and uh, they did a survey from uh, lots of people and they asked them uh, it's they are a real pattern they uh, is not a just uh, is not just a illu uh, illustration no it's a real real space and they asked them to 
give each space a score to know which one is more excited and which one is more calm or less calm. So at the bottom, you have the uh, legend that helps you to know which one is the most exciting and which one is the least calming space. And as you see, those window with the most complex pattern are graded as the uh, as an most exciting and pleasing space so it tells you if you have a boarding place this is one of the solution you can use for your space so again this is the se section clear story and here we have the main window you know it can be a good question if we ask ourselves where we mainly use this kind of clear story where we need a proper amount of light and where we where the light is very important for us okay we talked about these things previous session where we need to control lighting where the light was very vital or critical critical for us wherever we have the task wherever we have the task we wanted a right amount of light where what was our task reading cooking preparing washing all the action we have through our life so here it's a school especially an elementary school and our kids eye is very important for us so we want to give them a proper amount of light why because of because they are the next generation of this nation and they are the one who are gonna make this country so their eyes is the future eyes of this nation it is very important they should be educated very well and properly so the sun is critical and the light critical we want everything fastidious and right at the point and uh, here another example more contemporary example here we have uh, as you see the space is more generous more open and we have a vast open or public spaces because you know it's more contemporary we are more generous and open open-handed to uh, to share space with, with each other and enjoy the public. And the other example from the legend architect, Alvar Alto. And uh, it's a church, a well-known church and design, especially because of its uh, proper uh, lighting, uh, the way architect uh, hired the natural lighting from the clear story or the skylight and here another legend or star architect frank lloyd wright uh, almost the most uh, well-known or influenced art in the 20th century in uh, unbelief of lots of experts and here is a mansion is a house as you see another approach again light come from the ceiling or the sky uh, sky window and and raining or pouring to the interior space just pay attention to the middle picture we have the furniture around the fireplace you are sitting there among your family and it's like you are under the pouring of the light so as you see we have lots of tools in our hand to play with that we just think and uh, hire these uh, opportunities to, uh, to elevate the space. And here we have a museum. And uh, again, you see why we use that in a museum. As I told you, the skylight bring us a very soft and safe light. So why it's soft? Why it's uh, safe? Because when it comes to the interior space, we break that too many times. You cannot see the source of light. You cannot, you won't get any glare. You just get the illumination. You won't see any, uh, any source of light. Do you see anything? No. You just get the light. Your space is bright and ready to function. This is the way uh, indirect lighting is working. And here in this picture at, at the right, you can see the glazing here. So this is where light gets through the building and here another fantastic outstanding example from another legend star architect mario botta and this is a hotel 
And as you see, we cannot, please guys, do not forget that. Please keep it in mind. The climate is very, very critical. As you see, it's, I choose these pictures intentionally. As you see, there is too much snow there. So that it tells us this building is located in a cold climate. So they won't get too much sunlight. There isn't too much uh, solar heat there. Here in this sort of climate, architects are more open-handed to invite light through the space. And uh, the more light you get, the happier you are because, uh, you know, light is very precious there. And here we have uh, another approach towards skylight and uh, at the uh, right uh, top we have the bird view of the building. At its left side we have a kind of close shot from the, the opening. Uh, this opening is not the original one. The original one, one was doomed but they replace it with uh, the flat one because the doom was kind of difficult for the maintenance, cleaning and the managing the, the light to the space. And as you see here uh, at the bottom in the, again, this, uh, the, this building's function is a library, again, where we need proper amount of light and when you imagine you are standing under these uh, illumination when you look to the ceiling you have a fluorescent uh, lighting in the uh, in your fixtures but unbelievably it's just a right design which makes the natural lighting like uh, artificial lighting and here uh, this architect actually uh, won the, uh, this year uh, Pritzker Prize, uh, which is like a, a Nobel uh, in science. And uh, this is a very primary approach towards uh, getting a sky, uh, skylight. And uh, it's just some uh, uh, pottery and they cut that from the middle or the bottom and put it in the, in the ceiling. And after that, they pull concrete around that. And the, uh, the outcome is uh, this uh, playful, joyful interior lighting. And uh, tubular skylight. Uh, this, uh, this is another, uh, another tools or method we can use for illuminating the interior space and, and is, uh, is uh, consider uh, or encompass three different uh, three different uh, component. The first one is here, this the small uh, acrylic uh, dome, and uh, the the second part is this uh, uh, cylindrical uh, part. And here we have this transparent diffuser lens, and uh, you know. Uh, if you ask me what is the function of this, here, this zoom probably reduced the uh, uh, UV, uh, UV part of the sunlight. And here in this uh, tubular or uh, cylindrical part, the sunlight will be reflected till, we get, till it gets to this part. And uh, the heat, the good part is, if we have any heat from the sunlight, it goes to the uh, attic here, not getting through the building. So it's very beneficial uh, when we use the tubular skylight. Why? Because we just get the light. The, uh, we won't get the heat. But even if we need the heat, this heat goes to the attic. So if uh, we are living in a cold climate, we can use uh, this kind of passive approach to provide uh, uh, or to reduce our electricity bill or save energy. So we talk about this and here there is more links. So you, uh, it, tell, it shows you how to install that, how it works. And, and uh, here you see, you can see the uh, 
uh, actual space is unbelievable, isn't it? Uh, for me, actually, I really like that. When you look at this ceiling, when you check that ceiling, you cannot believe it's not an artificial light. It's just a tubular lighting. It's, it's unbelievable, you know, to provide the interior lighting of this big space with kind of with just a natural light especially when you don't have direct access to the light so you get you get the natural light indirectly to the space and it doesn't matter you are not you know adjusted to that and you see that in a variety of the uh, function here is the uh, creational or the port space here is the retail here we have a grocery store and here we have another store. So it tells us we can hire that wherever we want it. It's a window, like this is like this, exactly like this. But at the very top side, we have a component which we call it light shelves. The light shelves geometry, which is OG curve. What does it mean OG curve? So here can be concave or the other way around so the sun with the sunlight when it gets here it will spread too many times but not to the space it will reflect to the reflect to the uh, ceiling and it it will be even it's gonna be even and smooth so the reflection goes to the ceiling and uh, gives us brightness where is that here you can see it here so the window which is like here the window is closed with the curtain but part which is related to the light shelf is open so the light will get here will reflect to the light shelves and going to the ceiling and as you see we have the glare here but the glare is not in uh, in our eyes direction so, so it's not bothering it's just reflected to the ceiling and brings us the the brightness and uh, saving us from uh, expensive uh, electricity. Uh, it's a panorama view from the rooftop of that museum we talked about. And the issue here was the thermal sensation because the temperature inside this space is the same, but uh, the, it's the color which makes us uh, feeling uh, warmer or cooler deep down and uh, I wanted to give you this experience to uh, see how the color can affect our our feeling thermally so we can remember that and use it in our design or if someone in your in your career wants to underestimate this this value you will you will you will know what's the reality yeah. so again here we have the transmission from the one color to the other color and it's surprisingly uh effective you know just just you know just see the more fully the brain comes to life so here is talking about the brain function and our health and its relation to the light and the way we present it to the space. And as you see at the right side, we have the Pantheon uh, picture and uh, it gets light from its, the skylight or ellipse and uh, it's very dramatic and uh, it's like a, uh, dream is not like we are looking to the real space.